For WRCO News, I'm Joanne Krulotz. The body of a man was found after a search of a home by law enforcement in Prairie du Chien Friday. Police said that they were called to do a welfare check on a man and found him dead at the home. A 39-year-old man was arrested. According to a release, the dead man had wounds from a sharp object. The investigation led to a search of a home in Grant County as well. Police said that the incident was, quote, not random, and the suspect and victim knew each other. A student at La Crosse Central High School was arrested and is being accused of bringing a loaded gun to school. La Crosse police said a 16-year-old student was removed from school Friday after a staff member found the gun in a jacket left in a classroom. The school's police officer seized the gun and police then arrested the student, who was being recommended for charges of carrying a concealed weapon and THC possession in a school. School officials confirmed the incident in an email sent to families and staff Friday. U.S. Senator Ron Johnson appeared to hedge on Friday whether he or Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump would accept the outcome of the November election. Well, I sure hope so. You know, unfortunately, you know, here in the state of Wisconsin, uh, we have a governor who vetoed the types of bills that would restore confidence in our election system. So you're asking me a hypothetical question that I really can't answer because I don't know you know, how many different ways Democrats are going to want to cheat. Despite a statewide inquiry in 2021, there has been no credible evidence of systematic voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election. Johnson, widely seen as a staunch ally of Trump, defended the former president's campaign and his proposals during an appearance on the Earl Ingram Show Friday morning. You can listen to the full interview on the Earl Ingram Show on the Civic Media website app, social platforms, or podcast apps. With the election about a week away, Senator Tammy Baldwin and her Republican challenger, Eric Hovde, held campaign events in Eau Claire over the weekend. Senator Baldwin and Governor Tony Evers visited the city's IBEW local union to encourage canvassers and supporters to take advantage of early voting. Hovde visited Loopy's Bar and Grill in Chippewa Falls to urge his supporters to vote early as well. Both Senator Baldwin and Hovde have stressed the importance of voter turnout with a competitive election expected. As the tax season approaches, the IRS is encouraging you to sign up for an identity protection personal identification number. Spokesperson Christopher Miller says it's an extra layer of security that helps prevent people from filing a tax return, using your name and social security number, and then stealing your refund. Miller says people should sign up for a PIN by November 23rd so they can get it in time for tax season. More information is available online at irs.gov. With colder weather starting to settle into the area, heating experts are sharing tips with residents on how to winterize their homes properly. Experts say residents should begin with starting their heaters or furnaces now to reduce the risk of fire later. If they have a chimney in their home, they should get it checked for signs of deterioration, which could also cause a fire hazard. Experts also say it's a good time to check your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors to ensure they're working while checking your home for other heating-related fire dangers. The average gas prices in Wisconsin fell 6.7 cents during the last week. The average across the state today is $2.87 per gallon. This is over 21 cents lower than a month ago and more than 31 cents lower than this time last year. Gas is at its lowest level since January, which some Americans attribute to the upcoming election. Officials at Gas Buddy say politicians have little influence over gasoline prices. The switch to winter gasoline and the drop in demand is pushing gas prices down. Officials say these drops will continue into and even beyond the election as colder weather arrives. Police officers from the Richland Center Police Department, in cooperation with the Richland School District and St. Mary's School, will be entering classrooms this week. Jared Wilson is the Community Resource Officer with the Police Department assigned to the Richland School District. Officer Elizabeth Deidelhoff and I will be joining sixth grade classes at the Richland Intermediate School where we'll be teaching the PEAT program, which stands for Police Education Addiction and Tools. Uh, We start out with two sixth grade classrooms in the fall, and then Officer Deidelhoff will be teaching at St. Mary's, and then we'll return to the intermediate school in the spring 
to get the last two classes there. The PEAT program will begin October 30th. We'll have four sessions, one day a week, over four weeks. The PEAT program follows similar concepts of a previously taught program. We used to teach counteract. Uh, that ended, and uh, actually Officer Deidelhoff deserves all the credit for spearheading the PEAT program. Um, it teaches the same concepts as counteract, such as educating youth about police officers and our roles in the community, providing educational information about the effects of using drugs, alcohol, and violence, and also providing tools to work through real-life situations. The program is taught to sixth grade students by police officers who have knowledge of current trends in the community, work experiences to share real life examples, and the ability to relate to youth. The program is designed to bring together schools, families, and the police department to serve as a source of support and to encourage children to make healthier behavior choices. The first session will be introducing ourselves and and talk about what police officers do try and and build that positive relationship with the students then we get into the second week um, provide information about uh, drug trends in our community Uh, hopefully it's it's an introduction to that but uh, really stressing the effects of drugs and and alcohol and then uh, third week we get into how we can stay away from those substances with uh, promoting natural highs. It's something that the guidance department at Intermediate School is teaching now is our natural highs. Uh, we all have them, just making them aware of what they are and uh, what fun activities they can do to avoid drugs and alcohol. And then the last week is kind of a review of the three first sessions with a fun Jeopardy game with the students. The Richland Center Police Department's mission of the program is to educate youth about police officers and their roles within the community, provide educational information about the effects of using drugs, alcohol, and violence, and provide tools to work through real-life situations. Officer Wilson says the program helps build a relationship between the police department and the community. Even with my community resource officer position, getting to know the students and and then seeing them out in the community, they'll come up to me and say hello, as well as Officer Deidelhoff. And then when I go back on patrol, I run into a lot of students uh, from the P program that recognize me and want to say hello. A celebration of the completion of the program will be held after all sessions of the sixth grade class have been taught for the year. The American Red Cross is highlighting the ongoing need for blood and platelet donors as festive schedules ramp up this fall. Eligible individuals, especially those with type O blood and those giving platelets, are encouraged to make a donation just ahead of the holiday season. Blood supply momentum must remain steady as the Red Cross has worked this month to recover blood products uncollected due to recent hurricanes. Any disruption in the ability to collect blood can lead to an impact on routine and life-saving medical care. Blood drives will be held this week around the listening area. They include tomorrow from 9.30 to 3.30 at Lake Ridge Bank in Cross Plains and at Ho-Chunk Gaming in Baraboo tomorrow from 11.30 to 5.30. Two blood drives will be held Wednesday. The first will be held from 8 to 2 at River Valley High School. The second will be held from 11 to 4 at Weston High School Elementary and Middle School. A blood drive will also be held Friday from noon to 4 at Messianic Christian Fellowship in Black Earth. The seasons may change, but the need for blood donors stays the same. Give blood or platelets and make a difference in someone's life by visiting redcrossblood.org, calling 1-800-RED-CROSS, or by using the Red Cross Blood Donor app. Community First Bank and four banker volunteers will be recognized by the Wisconsin Bankers Foundation's Excellence in Financial Education Award at the upcoming WBA Flex Retail and Marketing Summit in November. Certificates of recognition will be presented to Ann Cooley, Regional Branch Manager, Lancaster, Kimberly Rabska, Branch Manager Baraboo, Sarah Paul, Branch Manager Reedsburg, and Sherry Huza, Customer Service Representative in Platteville. 
distributed annually by WBF, the Excellence in Financial Education Awards, recognize banks and individual bankers for their demonstrated commitment to improving financial literacy in their communities. Certificates of recognition recognize all individual bankers who reported between 5 and 19 presentations in a single year.